Hello again and welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time then a very warm welcome to you too. My name is Sheridan Coldstream, I'm a voice and confidence coach by day and this channel is devoted to helping people feel better about themselves more of the time. Now I've been musing today about something that I know I've felt from time to time in my life about this feeling of being an outsider, always feeling like an outsider. So when you walk into a room full of people who are already there and they're having a chat, how easy it is to assume that they're talking about you. They're almost certainly not, but that thought goes through the head. Sometimes we hear of this thing called imposter syndrome, which is when we feel we're permanently just an imposter. And what that means is we don't feel we deserve to take the credit for any of our achievements. So we always feel we're sort of winging it, somehow getting away with it, that we are a fraud, and that one day someone's gonna look at us with a piercing stare and go, I know your game, and they're gonna see right through me, <laughs> and discover me for the fraud I really am. And I remember several years ago now, I was offered a, a TV series by, the, by BBC One, and it was called Can't Sing Singers. And the day after I was offered that, which seemed absolutely unbelievably exciting at the time, I was in Oxford walking through one of the busiest streets which swarmed with people. And I felt like this outsider, even then, because I felt like the outsider, the, the, like, the, like a finger was pointing at me saying, yes, it's you, you've, you've finally got this, this big job. And there must have been thousands of them and just me. And I felt this is so odd, it's me versus the rest of the world. And that was a positive experience. It never occurred to me they might all be feeling the same thing too. More recently, a couple of years ago, I went for an audition for a TV commercial for uh, a company called Legal and General. And even getting the audition, I thought, well, this, this must be a mistake because I, I don't, don't feel this is right at all. So terrified as hell, I went to the audition, which was in London, and I walked into a waiting room and was met uh, by a girl with a clipboard and told to sit down in a waiting area with about 15 or 20 other actors, all roughly my age, but all looked infinitely more confident and experienced than I was. I was utterly convinced of this, of course. I sat there in fear and trepidation and eventually the girl with the clipboard said, right, we're going to let you in in twos. And my heart sank and I thought, oh God, no, this is unthinkable. I'll be going in with, with some super experienced, you know, devastatingly good looking and overconfident actor. And sure enough, that happened. I was called in with a guy called Rob, who was about six feet taller than I was. And we went in together and I felt tiny and he was, you know, eloquent and confident and all the things I thought I wasn't. And we did our audition. I thought he was absolutely brilliant, but mine felt rubbish. And then we came out and we went home and in the taxi back to the station, I just beat myself up all the way thinking, oh, oh, why couldn't I do that? Again, I felt like the outsider. I felt like the imposter. I felt I didn't even deserve to be there. Here's the irony. Three days later, I get a call from my agent and I got the job. I'd been offered this legal and general TV commercial, which screened in 2019, and it's still screening now. So you might even be able to spot me in it. You never know. But here's the point. I, I thought that was a mistake. I, I didn't really understand how that happened because the evidence, namely that I got the job, completely jarred with my feeling that I was an imposter, an outsider, and that I didn't really deserve to get that. So that's just two examples. After the TV series, so going back about 10 years now, and my, my business as a voice and confidence coach really started to grow because that's what I'd done on, on telly. I remember saying to my father, I said, Dad, I just feel like I'm kind of winging it. I, I just feel like I'm getting, getting away with this. I don't really know why. And he said, my dear Sheridan, I think all the most successful people in life have probably felt they were kind of getting away with it at times. And of course, I found that very reassuring. So let me talk a little bit about why imposter syndrome is a thing. And then I'm going to tell you how I think we need to overcome it. Well, as I say, it's a sense that we don't feel we can take the credit for any of our achievements or success. And I think it's mainly because of one presupposition, namely that everybody else has it together. Everybody else is sorted and it's only me, only you, that is this kind of weirdo, this kind of outsider, this imposter. Well, let's put that right straight away because everybody else is mad too. I love the way one of my favorite people to listen to on TED Talks is Alain de Botton. 
And Alain says, he says, everyone is mad. We are all mad. In fact, the only assumption we can make when we meet anybody for the first time is that they are mad too. The bizarre thing is uh, etiquette tells us that when we, when we sit down with people, we ask them how they, how they are and what they're doing was maybe the first question we should be asking people is, and how are you mad? And I relate to that so heavily that actually in the course of my day-to-day -day work, that's exactly what I do do. I said that we're all bonkers. How are you bonkers? What are your issues? I mean, get it straight out there, but it's not kind of very normal. But the point is this, everybody around us is as complex as you are. Everybody is prone to anxiety or, or feelings of inferiority or even feelings of superiority. And they cover their feelings of inferiority with a, a mask of superiority. Well, that's deeply unattractive to start with. Everybody is complex. Everybody has weird thoughts, inappropriate thoughts, even deviant thoughts sometimes, not just you. It's kind of everybody, but we tend, everybody goes to the loo, it's normal, but we tend to assume that that's just everybody else and it's not us. And it's worth remembering that it's not just us, it's everybody else as well. The other thing is this, when you're born, you have parents and your parents are older than you are. So as a three, four, five, six, seven year old growing up, you look at your parents and of course they have it all together. They hold down jobs, they earn money, they bring you up. How on earth do they do that? Sometimes they fly all over the world and they seem to have it all together. And by the time we're in our mid to late teens and we go, ah, I'm not sure my parents are quite as together as I thought, it's too late because the thought has taken hold and oh my goodness me, we realised the parents are not the perfect people we thought they were, but by which time we've already measured ourselves against these perfect people we once thought they were, which of course makes us feel a little inadequate and like an imposter and like an outsider and someone who's gonna to have to spend their whole life fitting in. So how do we deal with this? How do we overcome this feeling of being an outsider or an imposter? And I think the best way is this, we talk a lot about the little voice, the little voice in the head, the negative one that tells you all the things you wouldn't choose to believe and how that voice isn't actually you. Let's frame this a different way today. Let's imagine you've got one person on your shoulder called Doris and Doris is the one who always says, oh, you know you're gonna be found out. You know you're gonna be found out. You're just a fraud. I know you think you can get away with it, but actually they're gonna spot you. Just be warned. And then you've got David, David's a positive guy and he's on your, your, your other shoulder and David's gonna call Doris out and David's gonna say, come on Doris, shut your face. Um, this, this, is, this, this guy can do this. He deserves all the success he's got coming to it. In other words, notice when that imposter feeling kicks in and know that it's just a myth it's just a kind of gloss of bad habit thinking that we've accumulated over the years and you deserve all the success that you've worked hard to achieve and you can take the credit even for the things you walked into, like my audition, feeling you didn't really deserve to be there at all. It's just rubbish and it's worth remembering that. And I'm going to finish on one final thing, which is that Albert Einstein said this. He says, everyone is a genius. But if you measure a fish on its ability to climb a tree, then that fish is going to feel stupid for a very long time. On that note, and if you've enjoyed this, please like, comment below if you possibly can, and subscribe so you don't miss any more of these videos. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye for now.